Help me way. Steady on, mate. Excuse me, please. Kick it. What? Well, hey. Feel the groove, baby. The sky's gone out. Look out! Up there! <coughs> oh, nice one. I've never seen anything like that before, have you? You beauty! Welcome to Team Buddies. My name is Mr. My name is Mr. Smeg Hennigan. Sorry about that. And I'm going to be doing a post-production commentary of this uh, video game of Team Buddies. Now then, I would be doing live commentary, but this game is surprisingly difficult later on, so I figure I may as well save myself the trouble. There's like eight teams I can go for, obviously here, but there's the only difference is color. There, there's differences in the multiplayer, but um, that's multiplayer. So for this one, I'm just going to go with the good old True Blues. And with this, normally there would be a cutscene here, but it's the opening cutscene that was at the start of the video. So here's the basic information. Stuff has happened in Buddy World, and everyone's decided to start attacking each other. For fun, I'm guessing. But, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. It's basically a lot of information. The Every time Incom turns up, it's stuff from the Incompetence ag Agency. I don't know why I decided to read that out. But yes, there's a lot of stuff here. I hope you guys can read this quickly because I was going to read it out, but I figure you can read, you know? Basically, it gives you hints on how the game works. You've got red crates, which give you the item, basic items, super crates, which let you get much better weapons. You know, they're basically weapons plus. And here we have the level select screen. We only get one level, unfortunately, which is Battle Hill. And basically, the first stage serves as a sort of, um, what you call, tutorial. And unfortunately, we're not allowed to play um, Frisbees. It's unfortunate. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, I'm going to have a lot of stuff going on in this one, in this game. A lot of murder. Well, it's all good fun, murder. But anyway. <clears throat> this is basically a start off. A start, it starts you off with the game. Let you get, let you ease into it without having to use the bloody tutorials because they're just VR bullshit. Okay, now then, for the most part, I've cut most of the loading bars out. You know, one, the ones that just have, like, little pictures on them. But the ones that are the start of the missions, that have, um, briefs, they're basically the ones I've kept in, because if you couldn't read all that stuff, then, you know, here you go. And now we finally get into What's the game. Yeah, there's voiceovers as well. Isn't it amazing? And you can see here, blue, red and blue crate. The blue crate... As you can see, I'm going to use to make a new weapon. Oh boy, I'm reading everything on screen. I'm getting a gang together. And then it's completely thrown away because I found a shotgun. Very brilliant. I threw away an SMG to get a shotgun. You, know, you can break open the crates to get health and ammo. And of course, the blue crates will give you more health and or ammo. Now, there's one of the enemy bases, and the flag on the left there shows the health that the, enemy, that the, team, the base has. Thank you. Now, Obviously, sometimes you have to just break the bases. You don't always have to. You know, sometimes they're like an optional thing. But breaking the enemy base... Whoops, I dropped my weapon there. That was incredibly smart. Yeah. Um, breaking an enemy base will cause their um, stacking pad to deactivate, which is very useful. Although, the same can happen to you, so, you know, 
Oh, also, there's no, there is friendly fire. There's no smart bullets. Breaking a base almost always drops five hearts, ammo, and a couple of power-ups, which is good. As you can see, I'm using this to just recap on the yellow team. And I got an air shot in on him. Oh, that's just perfect. When an enemy is killed, they drop their, their weapon, of course. And this guy is... Oh, and of course, the less health they, they have, the more, um, the more tears come off, whatever you want to call them. Got an ammo cache there, which fills my uh, ammo up to full, which is brilliant. But of course, it overwrites whatever power up I may have had before, so if I had a shield, it's gone. No, I think I'm about to win this one. This dude doesn't know what to do. Like, I, think, I don't think he even has a weapon, so I'm kind of feeling a bit bad. Should have just dropped the shotgun for him, or punched him to death. You see? Pose. Hooray! He's up down the rubber dub. Nice. Beautiful. Basically, if you win, you get that. And of course, if you manage to complete all the objectives, you get a golden medal. If you complete the basic objective, but not the um, uh, optional objectives, which some missions have, then you get a silver medal and you don't unlock some stuff. Gain gold medals obviously unlocks things, but it's mainly for the multiplayer, so it's not really worth m mentioning much. This one, you've got to find a vehicle, and of course, kill everyone in the way. It's brilliant. Look at the dude on his little bike. For some reason, they've managed to clamp the damn thing. i am ne never figure it out. Yeah, we're, we're ruining this damn thing. Let's clamp it so they can't move it. Wait a minute. Anyway. Here's the second loading brief. The red mission the red mission dot obviously is stuff you have to do. The green mission dots are stuff you don't have to do, but if you do it, you're good. Sometimes they basically overlap though, so you know oh, whoops, there goes the cable again. Sometimes if you do if you do the optional ones Hello, ladies. you know, it's basically stuff that was in the way. I don't know what the hell I was doing here. I mean I could have just swapped over to the Oh yeah, the, that's a thing. There's a bunch of things you could do on this. Um as you can tell, the two characters there are different. The person I was playing as before was an infantry. He's really basic. The person I'm playing as now is a uh, commander. And as you can tell, because he's got slight camo colouring, and he's got a little light on his head. Oh boy. Yeah, as you can see, I may not have had the best of ideas trying to rush in and break everything. Oh, and my team's made a commando, as you can see. Thankfully, um, you, you can have up to four teammates at once. And if you've got one... Oh, there's a lot of gunfire. If you've got one um, teammate who's computer controlled already, you can just run in and do whatever the hell you want whilst he goes around collecting crates. Fortunately, it's not perfect. There are times when I've seen... He's trying, to, he's trying to go gun crazy on me with fists. That was that was brilliant. Sometimes you get... Um, what was it? NPCs... No, wait. Yeah. Sometimes your teammates, because they're, you know, computer controlled, they go, they go around trying to collect crates and such. Unfortunately, sometimes they're a bit dim. They'll try and steal from the enemy base. Not the not the best of ideas. Now, here's how you get the bike brace off. You've got to shoot it. Hooray! You got to open up the press circle down to vehicles. This is brilliant. Oh, just listen to that little cycling. You don't have to follow the road, obviously. That's just, that's just you know, for simplicity's sake. And as you can tell, on the top, uh, yeah, top right, you can see what people are doing depending on um, what's up there. Like if they've got squares, if they've got crates, then they're carrying stuff. If they've got a little uh, uh, buggy vehicle icon thing there, as you can see, you can. Oh, I've got stuff here. They're obviously in a vehicle. Now, the vehicles for the most part can carry crates. Um, two for the most part, although there's a couple that can carry three. I never figured out which ones. No. As you can see, once I get the button. I don't know why I tried to run him over, and I don't know why I backed up there. Oh, there we go again. Yeah, get the bike to the uh, bike park, and it just slides off into the distance. I reckon I killed about 20 buddies that game. Oh, come on, there weren't even three. Anyway. Hooray. See, I've unlocked more things, like tutorials. Oh, it's brilliant. And uh, I forgot to mention the stats screen. There's just basic information. Oh, uh, that's rubbish. It's shit's gonna... Sh this... This one is going to show some more interesting things of the game. Uh, basically, what was it? I don't know why there's... Oh wait, yeah, there is a motorcycle. Very strange stuff. Basically, you got to run around and uh, put all, turn all the bins back up and kill everyone who decided to try and turn them over in the first place. It's basically a weird sort of area control thing, except once you've controlled all the area, you've got to kill everyone. Fun times. And you've also got to find bits of rubbish that are scattered about. 
get them, and then you've completed your mission. Uh, your side mission, my mistake. <clears throat> Thank you, loading screen. Wash your legs. As you can see, there's one of the bins there. And then suddenly, oh boy. That was not meant to be happening. You can switch between normal and overhead, although I don't know if there's a button in game that does it. I know there's a button that rotates the camera, but I don't know. I've looked through the manual and it's just like, nah man, you gotta do this in the pause menu. But as you can see, normal would give normal gives you a much further view, but you can't see you can't see what's behind you very easy. As easily. But if you got it in overhead, you've got a very limited bird's eye view that lets you see everywhere. But it's brilliant. And Obviously, the first thing I decided to do was look around for the bins and any rubbish that may have been left around, such as dog turds, because, you know, rubbish. And banana skins. I've got to pick up ten of those, which I should be able to do with, without too much trouble. You see all the enemies, all the enemy teams are just running around doing whatever the hell they want. I may have to increase the quality of this video, I'm just looking at it as, like, pixely. Anyway, let's, as you can see here, but most things can be destroyed if you put in put in enough put enough bullets or explosions to them. And here I'm using the binoculars. The, you can use them to look around. It's brilliant without having to. You can use them to look around without having to worry about anything at all. Nearly got all of the rubbish. I don't remember what happens in pick if you. I don't remember if you get a mega crate or not for picking up all the rubbish. Anyway, but yeah. As you can see, on the left side, you get the rubbish bins that uh, control that are upturned, and the ones are t oh, one of them's just been turned over. As you can see, the bloody yellows are crazy like that. They don't want anything looking nice and clean. Why am I suddenly reminded of Pop Fuzz? Oh, well, there goes the camera. All right, all the bits of rubbish picked up. It's time to wreak havoc on the yellow team. Oh, he did not just do that. Look at this. He's even trying to take one of the blue crates. It's not his. I don't know why the hell. Oh, yeah, I know why I was trying to punch him there. Because the closer you are to the enemy, the, the thing's got one button for attacking, so. Which is kind of, which can get kind of annoying at times. So you get like bolted. How did I get upturned again? Anyway. You got the. You've obviously got ranged attacks. But if, you, if you're close enough, you'll end up punching them. See? With some enemies, this is kind of a requirement. You know, some, some of them you have to punch and stun, and then you can carry them around. But for now, it's just kind of like, go around, beat stuff up. You can not kill people by punching them, but, um, not the best of ideas. And of course, I'm trying to steal them. You can't break crates if they're on the stacking pad, unless it's your stacking pad. And when they're on the stacking pad on your side, they obviously, you know, broke up into weapons. And you get, like, a bunch of things, depending on how you stack them. Like, you get, you, as you can see, it's 2x2 two two crit. And you can stack up to what was it? Eight crates onto a single onto a single crate. If you get like one, if you just put a single crate onto it, you get like a light weapon, like an SMG. If you put like uh, one by two, you get those grenades that you dropped. I'm not going to grab them because I don't like the grenades much. <clears throat> if you stack them, what was it? Two? Um, what was it? One by two, so it's uh, high. If that makes sense. Yeah, so it's stacked like a buddy. You get a, you get a basic buddy. If you stack them, what was it? Two by two are completely flat, then you get, what was it, a heavy weapon. Depending on the setting, it can be anything, like in this setting, it's a bazooka. It's brilliant. Around here, around this point, I'm just looking around for the last um, uh, bin, which is over there. Oh, what was it? If you stack them two by two, but um, on high, or tall, as you can see there, you will s you'll make a better buddy. Quick knees up down the rubber dub. Nice. Thank you. You'll stack. You'll make a better buddy depending on the setting again. Like say with that one, it would be commando. <clears throat> and of course, if you manage to make a full two by two crate, you'll get a tank. Well, a vehicle, depending on depending on the game setting. Now this one's a little weird in that basically you got to time it out. You got to time the mission out. You got to stop the. You got to stop from kamikaze dogs from running up to your base and uh, exploding it. It's so funny. It's kind of kind of depressing in a very slight sense, but you know, basically, yeah, bomb dog squad. There it is. Lovely misspelling, but it goes along with the with the theme as it is. Anyway, you got five minutes to be able to defend your base from uh, bomb dogs. You'll be able. To, you'll know they're coming closer. Thank you. You'll know they're coming closer because you hear a, an ominous ticking. 
think of what was it. Oh yeah, of course. As you can see, as you can see, I'm, I swap between characters every so often. These cats can sometimes help, although I've never seen them actually help. You just gotta tap them. They, you know, just go close to them and they'll follow you around. Never seen them help though. You know, kind of typical of cats, really. Anyway, now ah, you hear that ticking. There is a bomb dog nearby. I got it. The best way to not to get rid of them because you can't defuse them. You just gotta kill them. It's sad but true. And of course, oh look, here's the yellow base again. Oh, no, it's, it's all the yellows. Huh. Yeah, I'm just breaking all the fridge so they can't stack anything. Ah, oh, that's that's the loveliest sound in the world. And that's the worst sound in the world. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, as you can see here. You saw I was carrying that dude, uh, that uh, poor little bomb doggy around. If you stun an enemy, you can carry them around a bit. Depending on what you're carrying around, it it's, might be a good idea, it might be a very bad idea. Like, say, if you carry around an enemy, not the best of ideas. Uh, I don't know if I meant, if I noted it before, since I've not used any grenades or anything like that. Oh, as you can see, um, I can damage my own teammates, which is not the best of ideas. Oh, and as you can see, the more... No, then. That was one of the things as well. If, you, if you're targeting something with, um, L, with the... What was it? R1? And then um, press L1, you'll tell you, it'll tell your team... Any teammates that aren't walking around to target it. Now, you see, I've got the grenades, and as you see, I'm going to have a lot of trouble with them. Because you can't make them detonate on their own. I've got to angle myself in such a way that it makes it go off. As you can see, I'm low on ammo, because... What was it? Each weapon uses different type, different amounts of ammo per shot. Like the grenade, the pistols, well, the Uzis only use one bullet per shot, whilst the grenades use eight. And there goes the poor little doggy. And there's another one. I just tell my team to try and target him because I have no ammo and I'm just punching the damn thing. And I've got a base. I've got a base to destroy. You know, I'm busy. As you can see, on the top right, I've got my uh, buddies building a bazooka. It'll be very useful for killing any anything that moves. Uh, you know, including yourself. Yep, well, there we go again. Aiming here, aiming on this game is a little difficult at times, as you can tell. I managed to get my team to, I managed to get my team to target the um, the bomb dog, and then realised that the damn thing stunned, so I decided to deal with it myself. And there it goes. Such a such a mournful noise. Makes me feel bad for them at times. Oh, there goes another bloody bomb dog. Right, there it is. Go up and deal with him. Right. That was the best sound in the world. Not because of that though. That was just lucky. It, sometimes you can find weapons strewn about that can make the game a lot more easier. Uh, a lot more easier. Yes. That's my perfect English once again going up. The the angelic choir you may have heard is tells you that there is a mega crate on the field. You find it, you break it open, the contents are yours to keep. Now sometimes they're vehicles, sometimes they're weapons, sometimes well, yeah, that's basically it. They could be either vehicles or weapons. I don't remember Oh yeah, I went here to finish off the place. As you can see. Oh yeah, the only reason I stopped firing is because in order to stop the weapons from being completely stupid, you gotta stop you gotta have to reload every so often. Each weapon has like a bunch of shots in each clip, so what was it? Yeah, you can only fire it for so long before it swaps um, to a com something completely different. Uh, with the yellow base is right to fulfill the um, secondary thing. There's the mega crate. You can tell because they're yellow and black. I got a motorbike. It's brilliant. If only I had this suit. As we get around faster, and because uh, because. <laughs> This is, it's a very strange way of thinking about it. I've got, I've got the minigun just on the Gatling gun on top of the bike, just willing, ready to chuck, ready to kill anything that's in there. Quickly enough, shooting it, shooting an enemy enough stuns him. And don't ask what that was meant to be. I'm not entirely sure either. And my entire team is in vehicles, as you can see. And because there's not enough, there's very little time left in the mission. I don't need to worry about that last bomb dog. Uh, you can tell the time's about to run out because the music kicks in. Uh, charge back to the base. Do whatever the fuck I wanted to do. Just do a little spinny-winny. And I hop up here.
Hooray! I managed to defend my base. Weirdly enough, one of the only missions. Well, one of the few missions that asks you to, to defend your base. It's the very rare, you know. And the buff skin unlocked for the on for, for the online. God, I've been on video games for too long. On oh, PC games for too long. It's had no online. It was a PS1 game. As you can see, it's uh, it's asking if I want to save. Anyway, going to use this opportunity to say thank you for watching. Sorry if my commentary has been a bit fractal. And I will see you on the next episode once this is done saving. Thank you and goodbye.